a.m. in the rainy capital, Tehran. You're watching Press TV's World News. Thank you for joining us. Now, top story this hour, senior U.S. and Russian officials have restarted nuclear talks and agreed to reconvene in September amid rising tensions between the two countries. The head of the Russian delegation at the summit reportedly said the United States showed readiness for constructive dialogue. The meeting in Geneva followed a verbal spat between U.S. President Joe Biden and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin. Biden accused Putin of seeking to disrupt the 2022 by spreading what he called misinformation. The Kremlin, however, roundly rejected the claim. Now, earlier this month, Russia warned that relations between the two countries are nearing a dangerous confrontational threshold. The rising tensions are due to disagreements over arms control, cyber terrorism, and several other issues. Jason Anure is a political commentator and joins us now. Jason, uh, welcome. When you look at the quotes by uh, President Biden, he says, uh, look at what Russia's doing already about the 22 election and misinformation. And that's it. Uh, just, to be, uh, just to be on the safe side, he also says, pure violation of our sovereignty. Without, uh, you know, do you think there's a fear uh, that uh, perhaps if the Democrats don't do well, as we saw with the uh, the, the Republicans uh, four years ago, perhaps or two years ago, if they don't do well, let's blame it on on the Russians. I think that's probably what they're going to do again. I think the United States has shown that it has a definite history of essentially blaming others for their own actions. I mean, we we saw that when originally Hillary Clinton had lost the election against Donald Trump, there was an immediate blaming of Russia, despite the fact that the actual testimony of the investigation actually revealed the opposite, that someone had been inside the actual headquarters and had copied data via USB. And there was a court case against the Democratic Party, uh, which involved Debbie Wasserman Schultz, in which uh, uh, Bernie Sanders was actually removed from some of his position where he was up about to win. So, and then when Donald Trump didn't win the election, he alleged some kind of evil satanic conspiracy. This seems to be the way the United States wants to perform all of their elections now to when they don't win, they just blame it on something nonsensical. I mean, it, it's still a little bit silly to blame Russia for the, the, the recent losses, but they didn't show any evidence of that. Right. And well, on that note, Jason, he is Biden. Members would say that President Biden, he is the president. Uh, he can't declassify anything that he wants whenever he wants. So where is the evidence, in your opinion? In my opinion, there really is no evidence. That's one of the great things about the allegations of hacking and putting out misinformation. You don't have to prove anything. In fact, I would believe that there would be a great deal of false information put out by people who support Trump, and they have done so quite openly on television, on the internet, social media influence, influencers, etc. So it, we very clearly have people who do put out misinformation, who are just regular average citizens of the United States, some of them even paid by Republican think tanks. Yet you, you can't prove or show Russia was involved. They could say, oh, there was a troll farm in another country that somebody hired. Well, who hired them? Just because that was in another country doesn't mean that that country had something to do with it. it uh, it's all just... It, it's all an elaborate blame Russia because they're our primary enemy at this time due to uh, a, a great deal of issues as, such as the, the gas pipeline, the ongoing situation in Ukraine, etc. It's essentially uh, it, it's an accusation that cannot be proven or disproven, so we just have to take the United States word for it. Fair enough, Jason. Thank you very much indeed for that. Jason and Ruhe, their political commentator, joining us live out of Niagara Falls.